welcome to the Language Fuel podcast. Our mission is to fuel the teaching and learning of languages worldwide. I'm your host, Joanna Smith. Hello and welcome to the Language Fuel podcast. This is episode number 35. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to us today. I've just had a very stimulating Saturday at a teacher training day here in Auckland. This was organized by some local people and it was a gathering of over a hundred different English language teachers from all around the place in New Zealand. Certainly most of them from Auckland, but a few from further afield and some from the South Island as well. So it was great. Uh, and we were hosting a bookstore on behalf of the Language Fuel Resource Room, where we were able to showcase some of the resources we have available. And I was fortunate enough to be one of the presenters on the day as well. I ran a session on one of my favorite topics, which is, of course, teaching English pronunciation. My session went well, and it looks like other sessions went well too. There was heaps of buzz around, and teachers were walking from one room to the next, and, you know, over the coffee breaks in the morning and afternoon and things like that. So, yeah, it was really great. I love these teacher training days because teachers get to step outside their usual daily grind and actually think about their practice and challenge themselves with new ideas. It can be really easy to get stuck into a rut if you don't take the time to listen to new ideas and discuss hot topics with other teachers. I'm conscious that in some institutions, teachers are lucky enough to be in a team with several others who are teaching languages. But on the other hand, there are also many language teachers out there doing it solo. They could be the only languages teacher in their school with no one else to you know, be a sounding board and talk about what's going on. So this is why these one-off days of coming together are so precious. And of course, bigger conferences as well. New Zealand has a big English language teaching conference every couple of years, as well as a big conference for teachers of other languages every two years as well. But you know, not everyone is fortunate enough to have access to funding to attend these big conferences or even smaller one-day events like last Saturday. Aware that many of the teachers who attended would have paid out of their own pockets because the organizations just don't have that professional development budget available. And that's why here at the Language Fuel Academy, we're working really, really hard to provide another avenue for language teachers uh, to receive this kind of support. We're developing a library of online courses aimed at helping teachers to improve their practice and get exposed to these new ideas and even sometimes old ideas but ones which you know nevertheless are just plain good stuff stuff that really works at the moment we've got a handful of courses that are published and just today we pressed publish on our latest course which is about the effective use of flashcards now again, there is absolutely nothing new about using flashcards for language learning. It's been around for decades. But are you doing it? Do you know the different ways to use them for both learning and practice? Are you aware of the online tools that you can use to create and share digital flashcards in minutes? If you're not using flashcards regularly in your language classroom, chances are that you're missing out on a super easy way to build up both vocabulary and fluency and your students are missing out on fun, engaging and even in addictive ways to revise their work outside the classroom. So please do check out that course today. Just navigate to the Languageville Academy, scroll down until you see that flashcards course. And although it's super simple, and look, the course is only going to take an hour, maybe two hours max, but there's a bunch of gems in there to help you incorporate these things into your lesson. And I'm also excited because as well as offering these courses and the others which are in the pipeline, ready to be published soon, just... Uh, in just a couple of months, we will be launching a membership site. So rather than buying like a one-off course, you'll be able to join as a premium member and get access to all of the courses 24-7 and be part of a private online community with other like-minded people who are also doing their best to improve their practices and be a better teacher. And this is something we've been working towards for a while and 
as I said, it should be available before the end of 2017, so please do keep an eye out for that as well. Anyway, the topic of this podcast is the number one tip to be a better language teacher. And after what I've just been talking about for the last several minutes, you might think I'm about to say it's engaging and ongoing professional development. Well, that is probably true, but I actually genuinely had something else in mind. In my humble opinion, the one thing that every language teacher should do to improve their practice is to be a language learner themselves. I truly do believe it's important to practice what we preach. If we're teaching other people about language and how to learn a language, we need to really understand what it's like to learn a language. And obviously many of us have experienced that in the past. Certainly when I became a language teacher at the beginning of my career, I had learned languages at high school and I'd been on exchange and all that sort of thing. But are we keeping up with our language learning practices? And, you know, the fundamentals of language learning are never going to change. Language is an intrinsic part of human behavior, but the mechanics of language learning and the tools available have dramatically changed over the past couple of decades. I have recently started to keep a bullet journal. Now, that's one of those things that are currently all the rage on social media, and my daughters are the ones who introduced me to it. If you haven't heard of it, just Google bullet journal and you'll soon find more than enough material explaining how it all works. Now, one of the best things about, uh, for me, about bullet journaling is that it helps me to consciously track the habits that I'm wanting to develop. Uh, it encourages you to set goals for yourself and then track as you you know keep those habits you've identified each day. So one of my habits for this month that I've identified it, that I'm wanting to develop is to practice language learning every day. Now, if you've listened to this podcast for a while, you'll know that I have dabbled in learning Maori and our family has also recently started learning Spanish. Um, I have other languages that I've also learned in the past that could definitely do with some brushing up as well. So with the help of my habit tracker in my bullet journal, I've managed to engage in at least 15 minutes of language learning every day this month. Now, it's not always the same language, but I choose whichever language I want to work on that day. And then I meet myself where I'm at, because obviously some languages are much more advanced than others. So, for example, for Spanish, I'm still working my way through Duolingo and I am encouraged by my progress through that system. Uh, I also used my iPad one evening to get out some electronic books from our local library, which were in very simple Spanish. Now, naturally, these were children's books because the range of online Spanish books at our local library didn't include graded readers for adults. Or even if it did, I didn't know how to search for it using the proper terms that was available to me. So I'm getting children's books. So anyway, the kids and I enjoyed really reading some really fun children's books in Spanish. Now, we didn't understand a huge amount, but we really loved picking out the words that we did know and guessing some of the other words and piecing the story together because there were plenty of pictures. So, you know, even though it was a story for children, we enjoyed the process of uncovering the meanings and and practicing the language. And we've been calling each other Bebe Conejo and uh, Papa Oso and all these things over the last few days. So that's been really fun. Uh, For my German, in terms of keeping my German up to date, which is a little bit more advanced, I managed to find an audio book also from the local library. And I've been listening to a novel for about 15 minutes at a time. Obviously, it's much more advanced in my Spanish, but I'm certainly not as fluent in German as I am in English. And I find that when I listen to the audio book, I cannot multitask. You know, when I'm listening to English in my headset, so like English podcasts or other, you know, even music or whatever, I can do household chores, I'm doing the dishes, I'm doing the vacuuming, putting the laundry on, whatever. And that's the kind of way that I get through my housework by listening to podcasts and whatever. But when I've got this German novel going on in my ears, 
I can't do anything else. It's like it sucks up all of my brain reserves and I literally have to sit in a chair, close my eyes and concentrate on what I'm hearing. And I do understand it. Of course, there's a couple of words here and there that I don't get, but it's at a good level for where I'm at. Um, but yeah, it surprised me at <laughs> how much energy, I guess, or attention uh, it, it sucks up when I do that. So, But I'm enjoying it, and it's waking up some brain cells that certainly haven't been used for quite a while. And as well as those, I've been interacting with some Te Reo Māori flashcards online, because, as I said, we just finished this course and we've published it. So, you know, if I'm going to be suggesting that other people use flashcards for learning and teaching languages, then I need to practice what I preach. And I've been using them myself for getting some more Maori vocabulary under my belt. So it's through all these learning experiences that a teacher really begins to understand second language acquisition, in my opinion. And I've been reminded through these experiences of several things. First of all, learners forget. So I've spent many nights on Duolingo just going back over what I had done previously because I just can't remember. It Language learning needs repetition, repetition and repetition. And it's so easy to forget that and to carry on with your lesson planning and think, oh, well, but we've covered that set of vocabulary or oh, I've already taught that, that piece on that particular grammar structure. You, you need to do it again and again. And until you experience going, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I've forgotten that again. You know, you, you, you don't know that as deeply. So that's one of the things I've learned. I've also been learning that context is super important. Again, I knew that. But when you experience it, you, you really it brings that home again. So, for example, in Duolingo, my context is an app on my phone or my iPad. So I might know a sentence super quickly in that environment, in that context. And I can recognize it. I can translate it. I can say it. I can read it, whatever. But if my husband asks me something in Spanish face to face, i.e. something where I need to respond with that same sentence, it takes me ages, first of all, to interpret what he said, because I'm not used to him speaking Spanish to me, and this is my kitchen. Uh, and secondly, to formulate that reply, because I've got to kind of dig deep and try to remember. And, and it's not hanging on anything that's in that current context, as opposed to knowing what it looks like on the page or on the digital device, if you like. So... When the context is different, the recollection path is different. So again, driving home the point that language needs to be practiced in many different contexts. You can't get away with learning it one time in one environment and then thinking you're going to you know, have access to that. And of course, like I said earlier, I also learned my brain does actually hurt sometimes. You know, I'm concentrating so hard to keep up with this German novel. And yes, I do even have it slowed down to less than normal speed sometimes. But, you know, all my mental attention is on the language and I just don't have much time for anything else. So, you know, the sympathy for your language learners, sometimes they really have to work quite hard to, to get that language activated in their brain. And finally, I've said this before and I'm saying it again, I'm just reminded how easy it is to get a hold of the target language nowadays. So many languages, so many tools, mostly online tools, of course, but they're all at our fingertips to help us learn these languages. It really has never been easier to get access to and learn these things. So as a language teacher, it's vital that you keep up with the times and know that your students also have these things at their fingertips. They can really fly, really put a lot of effort in, get a lot of exposure out there. But you need to show them how and you need to encourage them to make use of these amazing resources. So do you know about them? Are you using them? The best way to learn is just to use them yourself. Practice your own languages that you've learned. Pick up a new language. Challenge yourself. Choose a language from a, a language family you've not worked with before. Um, Anyway, if you don't know where to start with some of these online tools, I can only recommend that you take some of our Language Fuel Academy 
courses. We've got ones on how to create interactive videos, you know, how to search through YouTube to find some appropriate ones, um, you know, some other tools and stuff. Of course, the flashcards course has got a few different tools in there as well. It is our aim to serve you as language teachers so that your teaching practice is effective and your learners are successful. So that's my one massive tip for today. Be a language learner yourself. Experience language acquisition and your language teaching practice will definitely be improved. Thank you for listening. Do check out our courses today at languagefuelacademy.com and sign up for our weekly newsletter if you're not already on it. So you can head on over to languagefuel.com enter your details and you'll be among the first to know once we open our membership site and you can enjoy that professional development and guidance in teaching and learning languages. And I'm really looking forward to getting to know you this way and accompanying you on your journey. Thanks for listening. Until next time, keep up the amazing work. Go out there and do some language learning as well as some language teaching. And I will see you next time. Ka kite anō. Thank you for listening to the Language Fuel podcast. You can navigate to the show notes and links via our homepage at www.languagefuel.com. See you next time.